a boy found a broken robot in a landfill and thought it was just a toy. However, after fixing him, he realized that the robot possesses incredible ability. In the world of the future, traditional boxing matches lost in their relevance and spectators' interest due to a lack of violence. They have been replaced by gladiator fights featuring human-controlled robots. Charlie Kenton is a former professional boxer who travels across the country and takes part in robot boxing, but suffers one defeat after the other. One time after a busy night, Charlie wakes up in his van surrounded by empty beer bottles. He gets a call from a man who asks him about his $30,000 debt. Charlie calls the man the wrong name and the man realizes that he isn't the only one the boxer owns money to. Charlie pretends to have connection issues and hangs up. A few girls come up to the van and ask Charlie to show them the famous fighting robot ambush. One of the girls takes out a camera to take a picture of the robot but the man asks $5 for a picture. The kids decide that an old piece of metal is not worth it and leave. At the fair, Charlie meets his old friend Ricky, the manager of the arena. He promised to pay Charlie $3,000 if Ambush takes part in a fight against one of his bulls. However, the deal involved a bull weighing 800 pounds, and Ambush's opponent weights twice as much as him. Charlie decides to go all in and offers Ricky a bet of $20,000 if he wins the fight. Ricky agrees to the bet but warns of the dire consequences for Charlie if he loses again and doesn't pay off the debt. The fight begins and Charlie pretentiously introduces Ambush to the public. At first, everything is going well and the robot easily dodges the opponent's blows. But Charlie gets too carried away interacting with the public and fails to notice the enraged bull rushing at the robot from behind. The animal crashes into ambush and takes his leg with it. Charlie asks Ricky to stop the fight, but he happily watches his opponent lose. In the end, ambush turns into a useless heap of metal that children take apart for souvenirs. Charlie doesn't have the money to pay for the loss, so he tries to slip past Ricky unnoticed. The boxer is followed by two men and hits one of them, thinking that they were going to demand money from him. However, the strangers inform Charlie about the tragic news. His ex-wife has died, leaving their 11-year-old son Max an orphan. Charlie is not very concerned about his son's fate, and he goes to court to sign the parental waiver of custodian rights. Some wealthier relatives of his deceased ex-wife are willing to adopt the boy, so Charlie sells them the right to custody for $100,000. For $50,000 deposit, he agrees to take Max for the summer to improve the father-son relationship. Using the proceeds, Charlie buys Noisy Boy, one of the best robots with voice control on the black market. Charlie returns to the gym where he lives together with Bailey Tallett, the daughter of his deceased coach. The young woman scolds him for an expensive purchase, as he owes her money for rent. He attempts to seduce his girlfriend, but she reminds him that she needs the money to pay the bills. At this moment, the relatives bring Max in. The boy is upset not because his father sold him, but because he didn't share the proceeds. Charlie says that he wasted all the money on buying the robot and that Max can get out of here if he doesn't like something. The boy decides to stay and watch the noisy boy unboxing. The fighter in the samurai armor emerges from the box and everyone admires him. Charlie decides to test voice controls and says a few battle commands, however the robot doesn't react at all. The man decides that he was scammed and blames Bailey for not checking the robot. Max turns out to be smarter than the adults and pronounces the commands in Japanese, which is a native language of the robot. Noisy boy obeys and Bailey then realizes that they only need to change his voice control settings. After a short test drive, Charlie loads his robot into his van and plans on going to the next competition. Max steals the car keys and asks his father to take him with unless he wants to be left without a car. Reluctantly, Charlie agrees and they arrive at an underground fight club where they meet dozens of other robots. Charlie is certain that this time he will win for sure, so he asks the organizer Finn to sign Noisy Boy up for the main fight. Max tries to talk his arrogant father out of it and advises him to take part only in warm-ups since he has never tested the robot on an actual battlefield. But Charlie doesn't pay attention to his words and makes Noisy Boy fight against the star of the fight club, Midas. In the beginning, Noisy Boy inflicts powerful blows on his opponent and the audience lets out excited screams. The robot samurai keeps dominating the battlefield and Charlie is thrilled that he is about to get the easiest money in his life. Due to his inattentiveness, the man misses Midas's hit and the opponent takes control of the battle. Charlie tries to figure out what commands Noisy Boy has and yells out those commands that sound cooler. Charlie's opponent knows the abilities of his robot better and so he soon knocks Noisy Boy down striking his head off. After the devastating fiasco, only the voice control of the robot survived. Max rightly scolds his father for fighting against the champion without even learning any standard commands for Noisy Boy. Charlie doesn't want to take the blame and orders his son to shut up if he wants to spend this night in warmth and not out in the street. On the way home, they stop at the junkyard to look for parts for a new robot. While gathering parts, Charlie tells Max a story of how the boxing robots came about and how they replaced humans in the ring. 
listening to his father, Max doesn't notice a cliff and falls. Max hangs on a robot's hand, which saves him from his death. Charlie goes down the cliff to his son and puts him back on the ground, tightly holding the frightened boy close to him. Max gets out of his arms to see the part that saved his life. To his surprise, he finds a body of an old robot in the dirt. The boy asks his dad to bring the cart so they can take their find home. But Charlie goes back to his normal selfish self and refuses to help his son. Max drags the robot till dawn all by himself, going up the steep hill. Finally, he brings him to the van. They go back to the gym where Bailey discovers in horror what is left of Noisy Boy. The woman is disappointed in Charlie and asks him to stop chasing an imaginary victory until he loses everything that he has left in reality. The man persuades Bailey to help him for the last time and check the robot that Max brought. It turns out that it is an outdated version of the robot that was created not for fighting but as a sparring partner. It can't attack, but it's good at taking a blow. To everyone's surprise, the robot turns on and Bailey notices that it has a rare shadow feature, which allows the robot to mimic any human movement. Max cleans the robot from mud and notices that its name is Adam. The boy suggests testing the find in illegal robot fights to make some money. At night, while everyone is asleep, Max sneaks into the gym and turns Adam on. Together, they go on a late night walk, where the boy learns to control his first ever robot. In the morning, Max decides to ask Bailey about what his father used to be like. She enthusiastically tells the boy about Charlie's boxing career, about how he always fought till the end and didn't give up even in front of the strongest opponents. With the advent of the era of robots, no one needed his fighting skills anymore and he couldn't become a champion. Charlie interrupts the conversation and informs Bailey that he is leaving with his son for Atlanta to find a partner who would buy a new robot. They arrive at the location and Charlie asks Max to wait in the lobby of the building while he goes to look for Finn. There, the boy meets Tak Mashido, the creator of Zeus, the invincible robot champion. The man assures reporters that Zeus will destroy anyone who fights against him on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Charlie asks Finn to lend him money for their old friendship's sake, but Finn refuses to bet on him. Frustrated and angry, he allows Max to take part in a fight at the zoo, just so that his son would lose and leave him alone. The next day, Charlie wakes up from Max's voice, as he has been training with the Atom since the morning. He washed the robot and programmed the commands himself using the shadow feature. Charlie is pleasantly surprised by his son's persistence, understanding deep down where he got this quality from. They arrive at the place where the battle is held, and Max negotiates a deal with the leader. If Adam lasts one round, then the boy takes $1,000. However, if the robot doesn't survive, the leader takes him. The fight begins and Max takes control of Adam. The robot doesn't attack but only defends itself, steadily taking the blows of the enemy. Charlie advises his son to move more to maneuver the robot's attack. But the opponent grabs Adam and strikes him in the head, causing him to fall. The countdown to the end of the round begins and the robot has only 30 seconds to get up. Max orders Adam to get up and he obeys, which means the boy automatically wins $1,000. The leader doesn't agree with this outcome and offers to double the winnings if the robot lasts one more round. Now it is Charlie who is trying to talk his son out of this risky adventure, but Max agrees. The second round begins, and Adam jumps and strikes the enemy with a crushing blow, causing the poor fellow system to crash. Max wins and proudly takes his prize while the crowd cheers him. The next day, the boy continues training with the robot and tries to teach him new commands. When Max gets bored, he decides to dance with Adam and he easily copies all his movements. Charlie approaches them, and the boy tells his father that he installed Noisy Boy's voice control on Adam. So now they don't need a control panel. He asks his father to teach Adam his boxing style through the shadow feature. Charlie is initially reluctant and advises his son to make the dance Adam's unique feature in the ring. Max agrees to dance under one condition, only if his father teaches the robot how to box. Thus begins their hard teamwork. Charlie teaches the robot combat techniques from morning to night, and Max begins each of their fights with a dance. Adam gets victory after victory, and the father and son are getting closer and closer. After earning money from small town fights, Charlie sends part of the winnings to Bailey to pay off his debt with interest. The dancing robot quickly wins the heart of the audience, and he is talked about even in the news. Thanks to the popularity of the robot, Charlie and Max are invited to participate in the Real Steel Champions League tournament. While Max is setting up Adam, Charlie mentally prepares him for the fight and says that all emotions should be left outside the big ring. A manager enters their workshop and invites them to the lodge of Farlamkova, the owner of Zeus. The businesswoman is looking for a sparring partner for Zeus and offers to buy Adam for $200,000. The offer is valid until the first round with his rival Twin Cities. Charlie immediately agrees, but Max refuses and leaves the room. Charlie tries to persuade his son to accept the tempting deal, but he asks his father to think about why Lemkova would want to buy a robot for such a large amount of money. Max believes that Adam is special and doesn't intend to sell his metal friend. To the deafening roar of the crowd, 
the two-headed robot Twin Cities enters the ring. Max leads Adam out by performing a battle dance. The robots start the fight and, within the first minutes of the match, the enemy mercilessly attacks Adam, preventing him from striking back. Charlie then notices Twin City's weak point, his right shoulder twitches before every punch. Adam dives under the opponent's arm and begins to deliver devastating blows to the body. After weakening Twin City's right side, Adam knocks him out with a kick to the head. The audience bursts into applause. Bailey, who has been watching the fight all this time, also screams with joy. Max runs into the ring and snatches the microphone from the referee. He publicly challenges Zeus, the robot of Farolum Kova, to fight. After that, he and his father take the winnings and go to the van. Ricky meets them there and tells the thugs to attack them to take his money back. They beat up Charlie and take all their money. Worried about his son, Charlie takes him to his legal guardians to keep him safe. With tears in his eyes, the boy begs his father to let him stay with him. But Charlie doesn't want to risk it anymore. Max gets upset and leaves to pack, and Charlie refuses to take the other half of the money for the sale of custody. Charlie tries to persuade his son to leave with his relatives and says that he doesn't consider himself worthy of Max. As a farewell, Max tells Charlie that he wants his father to fight for him. All the way home Charlie remembers the time he has spent with Max. He comes to Bailey and lies down next to her, which makes her very happy. In the morning, the woman convinces Charlie not to leave his son and assures him that it is not too late for them to improve their relationship and correct the mistakes of the past. They kiss and Charlie goes to Max. He tells his son that he regrets not being around all these years. Charlie asks to give him another chance and promises to fight for him this time. Then, he moves away and Max sees Adam. Charlie says that Zeus accepted his challenge and persuades his aunt to let Max go to the tournament. Champions League hosts reveal that Tak Mashido called yesterday's fight with the old robot Adam an insult to his creation. This announcement caused a PR nightmare for the Zeus team, so they had to take on the challenge. Charlie and Max arrive at the tournament along with Adam. In the meantime, Finn takes bets that the junkyard robot won't last until the end of the round at odds of 1 to 5. Ricky approaches him and confidently bets $100,000 that Adam won't last until the end of the first round. If his bet goes well, then at the end of the match he will get half a million dollars. A welcome show is put on for Zeus, where he epically jumps into the ring to the cheers of the crowd. Adam appears more modestly, and the fight begins. Zeus knocks out the enemy with the first blow. All spectators are sure that the champion's victory will be quick. Adam gets up but immediately receives a new series of powerful blows and falls again. After the third knockdown, the robot gets up again and Zeus corners him. Finally, Charlie pulls himself together and strikes the enemy, and then backs away. To everyone's shock, Adam takes the lead in the fight and stubbornly delivers blow after blow to Zeus. Despite a strong opponent, the old robot manages to stay on his feet until the end of the first round. Ricky tries to leave the building in a hurry, but Finn finds him and takes his money. The fight continues and Adam manages to heroically survive the second and third rounds. By the fourth round, Zeus unleashes all his power on the enemy and inflicts serious damage on him. Another blow destroys Adam's voice control system. Despite this, the robot manages to hold out until the end of the round, but now the chances of him winning are minuscule. Max tries to get his father to control Adam through the shadow feature. The boy notices that Lomkova and Mashido are starting to get nervous, fearing the old robot's hidden abilities. In the end, Charlie succumbs to the desperate requests of his son. He, as a coach, gives Adam a motivational speech before the fight, despite the fact that the robot can't hear him. The final fifth round begins. Charlie holds the block, exhausting the opponent. Max begins to worry that Zeus will destroy his robot. He asks his father to start fighting, but he says it's not time yet. After waiting for Zeus to run out of energy, Charlie delivers a series of crushing blows. The champion of real steel starts losing, and Tak Mashido himself takes control of Zeus. Despite this, Charlie delivers a powerful uppercut to the opponent's head and knocks him down. Zeus gets to his feet, but Charlie attacks him again, testing all his fighting techniques on the robot. Zeus is saved from complete defeat by the sound of a gong, announcing that the battle has come to an end. The audience cheers and shouts Adam's name. Bailey runs onto the stage and kisses Charlie. Nevertheless, Zeus still wins based on the points and remains the reigning champion of the Real Steel Tournament. However, the fight was a crushing failure for Farolam Kova's company. Adam is pronounced the people's champion, the outcome that Max is perfectly happy with. The boy falls into his father's arms, who makes it clear without any words that he is proud of his son and that he loves him. Together with Adam, they go out to the middle of the ring and enjoy their glory and recognition. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this recap, I would really appreciate it if you can hit the like button and subscribe, so you'll be notified whenever I have uploaded new videos. Cheers!